What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to talk about concurrent programming in Go and Go routines. So let us get right into it. All right, so I've mentioned a couple of times before that Go is optimized for concurrent programming. And in today's video we're going to take a look at Go routines which are part of concurrent programming. Uh, and for this we're going to start with a very basic example. Let's say we have a function and this function is called some function and it prints something. So fmt.println hello world, that's it. And then we have some other function, other function, which is going to print something else. Now, what I can do is I can just call these two functions. So I can say some function, other function. And I can run this program here. And you're going to see that I'm going to get hello world, something else. So what happens if I now sleep in this function? So I wait for it. I say time sleep, which is just basically idle time. We're not doing anything. We're saying, okay, wait for two seconds. So two times time dot second. Uh, we wait for two seconds and then we print that we're done waiting, for example. So we print done waiting. There you go. So what would happen in this case, we would print hello world, we would wait two seconds, and then we would print done waiting, then we would call other function, which prints something else. Now, if for some reason, the order is important, because other function depends on some function, and they cannot be done in an asynchronous way. So it is a problem if other function gets executed before some function or during some function. If that is a problem, you need to do it in a synchronous way. But if it's not a problem, if those functions are independent, so if I can also call other function, while some function is working, and it's not a problem, we can do it in an asynchronous way. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that asynchronous does not mean multi threading. And it does not mean that we're doing something in parallel, it just means that whenever some function or whenever, um, whenever this function here is having idle time, I can use this idle time to already start executing the other function uh, down here. So if I want to do that, I just have to call these functions not like that, I have to call them in a go routine. And I do it by just saying go some function, go other function. So you're going to see now that if I run this, we're seeing, uh, actually, we're not seeing anything. Why is that? Oh, I know why that is because um, that's another thing that we need to mention. If the main function returns, it doesn't matter what is still going on. If the main function returns, it's done. So those, uh, those go routines here are not important. So if main reaches the last line of code and returns, it doesn't really matter what you write up there. Uh, so if we want to see the results, we need to say time sleep, uh, five, for example, now this is not a best practice way, this is not a good practice way. Uh, to synchronize stuff. So you should never use sleep in order to wait. Uh, because you can await go routines. Uh, you can use stuff like wait groups and go and so on. But for now, we're just going to use time dot sleep. And uh, by doing that, we're just not going to jump out of the main function. But if we do that, you're going to see that we get hello world. Uh, what do we get then something else and we didn't get we didn't get done waiting. Why didn't we get done waiting? Oh, I have five times seconds, of course. That is why time second with a capital S. Because five is not five seconds, five is basically I think milliseconds or microseconds or whatever. So if we do it now, it should work. There you go. As you can see, we get hello world, then we get something else, then we get done waiting and then we terminate. Um, this is not the order of the functions because what we do here is we call hello world, then hello world or some function actually goes to sleep for two seconds. Meanwhile, other function is using that idle time to print something else. And when this waiting is done, we're going to print done waiting. And then we're going to wait the last three seconds to terminate this program. So as you can see, this works in an asynchronous way. Now let's say we have these two functions and they need to share a resource, they need to communicate with each other 
in an asynchronous way. So we cannot just have a basic variable because then you don't know, okay, which one is going to access this variable first. And maybe if this variable was not set by one function, I cannot receive from it from the other function. So we need to do a lot of complicated things if we do it with variables. So instead, what we can do in Go is we can use channels and channels, as the name already says, are communication channels for the individual Go routines. So let's create a channel here. We do it by saying information, for example, I'm going to call this channel information. It's going to be, and we use the make again, we, we use the make function, and we're going to make a channel which is um, focused on transmitting strings. So information is now an information channel uh, through which we can send and receive strings. This is the basic idea. And now what we can do is we can create actually, let's get rid of those two functions here. And we're going to say function, um, send information, for example, we're going to pass uh, a channel here. And if we pass a channel, this is one thing that we also need to keep in mind. Uh, if we pass a channel to a function, we need to specify the direction. Maybe before we do the function, I should show you how the channel works in general. Um, how this basically works is we say information is the channel. If you want to send something to the information, we do it like that. So we basically say um, information, hello world. And then if we want to get it out of the information channel, for example, to print it, you say FMT print line and you say arrow information like that. So this is how you write into the channel. This is how you receive from the channel. And what we can do now is we can do this in functions and we can do it concurrently. So if we have a function again, send information, we need to pass a channel. Now this channel, since we're sending information is going to be directed towards the sending end of the channel. So we're going to send into the channel. Uh, and we're going to call this channel. And in order to specify that we're storing information that we're sending information, we need to first put the channel keyword, then the arrow and then the data type, in this case, string. So this is basically um, the parameter for sending into a channel. Um, once we have that, we're also going to pass the information piece. So just info, which is going to be a string. And inside of this, we're just going to say um, channel info like that. So this is how you send information to the channel. And then we're going to say function print information. Here, we're also going to pass the same channel, but we're going to get the other end, the receiving end. So we're going to say channel and here we're going to have the arrow first, then channel and then string. And we don't need any second parameter. And here we're just going to say FMT dot print line and channel like that. So this might seem a little bit complicated. But again, let me repeat how this works. You define a channel information, for example, you make this channel a string channel. And this channel right now is the communication connection between go routines, for example, um, which basically means that if you send into the channel, you need to pass it as a sending end, you can write information into the channel and the other end, the receiving end can get it out from the channel. And this happens in an asynchronous way, because if there is nothing in the channel, and we try to receive it, so let's say we don't execute this function, but we execute this function, this function is to have uh, it's going to have a lock, it's going to wait, and it's going to wait until something enters the channel. If nothing enters the channel, and I have some stuff down here, this stuff is not going to be executed because we are still waiting for the message. So it is waiting there until it gets some information, which you cannot do uh, in a simple way with ordinary variables, because it's just going to read the variable and it's going to notice that nothing is there. Uh, with a channel, it's going to wait for information to enter the channel, and it's only going to proceed when information is in the channel. Um, and with the default channel, we can also not send uh, more stuff into the channel if the channel is already full, because we're going to talk about buffer channels in a second. But ordinary channels don't have any memory. So if you send something to the channel, you have to wait until it's received from the channel. Otherwise, you cannot just put more information into the channel. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and say, go uh, send information information and then we can say hello. And then we can say go print information, information. And we're going to wait obviously down here. That's it. So let's go ahead. And you're going to see we get hello as a result. So 
This also works if we first call the print and then the send. So if I go ahead and say go print information, information, this will also work because we're doing it in an asynchronous way, which means that print information is going to try to get from the channel, it's going to realize nothing is in the channel. So I'm going to wait. And this waiting is idle time. And in that idle time, send information uses the CPU time to store in the channel, which basically means, okay, now there is information in the channel. So print information can print that information. Um, if we do this in a non uh, or in a synchronized way, you're going to see that we get a deadlock probably. I think so. Yeah. As you can see, we get a deadlock because all go routines are asleep. So we're waiting for information to enter the channel and we cannot receive that information. Now it's the same, I think the other way around, which might be a little bit surprising. Um, but you can see that the same thing happens if we first send and then print, because if we send, um, we cannot send until there is the, uh, unless there is a receiving end. So the sender is also waiting. It's not just sending and storing there, but it's actually sending and waiting for someone to receive. And unless someone receives this sending threat or this sending go routine cannot stop. So when you send into a channel, you're not putting a value there, you're not storing a value there, we're, we're sending a value there, and someone else has to receive that value. Um, so this is the basic way in which channels work and go. Now, all I just explained is true for ordinary channels, but not for buffer channels. And in Go, we can also have buffer channels, which allow us to store stuff in the channel, if no one is receiving. So in order to do that, we don't say information make chan string, we say information chan make string comma, and then uh, the size of the buffer in this case five, which basically means we can store five elements in this channel in the buffer of this channel without having someone receiving those five elements. Uh, and then if we add a sixth one, then we're going to get a deadlock unless someone is starting to receive stuff. So if I go ahead and say information, and I'm feeding into the information channel, hello world, and a bunch of other strings. So hello world, for example, then hi, then hello, then hey, and then I don't know, one, two, three. This is going to work. So if I run this, you're going to see that I'm not going to get a deadlock. Uh, you can see that nothing is happening because we're waiting five seconds, but the program is not saying, hey, I have a deadlock. No, it's finishing after five seconds after the sleep statement. And we're not doing anything in go routines here. So we're not doing anything in uh, in, in an asynchronous way, we're just doing this in a very synchronized way. Um, and we can go ahead actually and try to add one more of those lines. So I can say information ABC, for example, and then you're going to see that it's going to say deadlock because we're now storing six items, or actually we're store, uh, storing five items in the buffer. And we're trying to send a sixth item, but there's still no receiving end. So we're waiting for someone to receive at least one element, it's not happening. So we have a deadlock. Um, however, we can go ahead and say FMT dot print line, and we can start receiving from the information. And we can do so five times. And you can see that I get everything from this. Now, if I receive one of those, I can go ahead and store another one. So I can go ahead and say, okay, here I can enter ABC because I have already uh, taken one out of uh, from the buffer. Um, and this is why I can do it. Now I think I'm not sure to be honest, but I think no, maybe not. I, I would have to write it in the function doesn't matter. So this is how buffer channels work, we can have buffers and notice that I'm not doing anything with go routines here. This is purely synchronized. So this is happening one after the other, as you can see, I can store five elements, then someone starts receiving, of course, if I have multiple functions running in go routines, um, we can we can still do it like that. The good thing then is, of course, that I don't have to wait unnecessarily to store stuff into the channel. If no one is receiving right now, but I know that someone will be receiving eventually. So I don't have to unnecessarily wait for receiving end. Uh, this is how buffer channels work. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.